This video explains the roughness coefficients in open channels. The objective of this experiment is to determine an average value of both Manning, N, and Chessy, C, coefficients for the arm field laboratory flume which is made by two different types of material. To understand the difference between N and C, and to understand the parameters which affect both N and C, the experiment setup and tools. Number 1. The Arm Field Laboratory Flume. The sides of the flume are made of glass while the bed is made of steel. Changing the water depth changes the contribution of the sides in the computed average roughness while the bed contribution remains the same. The length of the flume is equal 10 meters and the bed width is 30 centimeters which will be of great importance in calculations later on. Number 2. Bed Slope Wheel. This is the bed slope wheel by which we can control and adjust the bed slope of the channel. In our experiment, we adjust it to be 1 to 200. Number 3. Point Gauge. The point gauge is used to determine the bed level and water level. When this pointing tip is on the water level, the level of water is then measured. And the same for the bed level. The reading is taken from the tall ruler on the left. To have the reading, you should see the ruler on the left matches the zero of the right small ruler at which level. In this capture, the reading is 9. And then, to increase the accuracy, notice which line on the right ruler makes an horizontal line with the corresponding line on the left ruler. Thus, in this capture, the reading is 9.7. Number 4. The Orifice Meter. The Orifice Meter is the device which measures the discharge flows in the flume. It has three attachments. The first one is the control valve which is used to open the flow, decrease or increase the discharge. It's connected to a pump which takes water from the ground tank. The second one is the manometer, which is actually the orifice meter. We shall take the difference between those two level of water in the small tubes. The third one is a chart designed for this orifice meter to convert this difference of water level in the manometer into the discharge. And we will see in details later in this video. The equations to be used. Since we want to get Manning coefficient and Chessy coefficient, we shall use Manning and Chessy equations. So now we need to get the water depth, then calculating the area and the wetted perimeter, and thus we would be able to get N and C. But why SE not S node? Let's see. Here is the flow in the flume. It's definely non-uniform flow as it's just 10 meters length, so its length is relatively short to allow for uniform flow to develop in addition the existence of the tail water gate to control the water level in the flume as will be discussed later. Now, we are going to deal with non-uniform flow which has a varying water depth. But finally, we just need one depth to substitute with, in the equations, as well as, the magnitude of total energy line slope is needed. So, we will take two near sections and get y1 and y2. So, we can take the average of both in equations. Then, we will use the average depth in area and wetted perimeter calculations. Then, we want to get the SC. SC equals the difference between energy at section 1 and section 2 divided by the length between those two sections. Let's now get total energy at section 1. The potential head is equal bed slope times the length. The pressure head is the water depth at section 1. Then the velocity head is V1 squared over 2G. By the same concept energy 2 can be obtained. So, total energy 1 and total energy 2 can be expressed by those equations. And finally we can get SC. An important note. The length between the two sections shall be from 2 to 4 meters to allow for a measurable change in total energy, in addition, to get an average water depth which is representative for the section, the experimental procedures. 1. Open the valve to get the suitable discharge and get the discharge by obtaining readings from the orifice meter. 2. Adjust the tail water gate on certain low level. 3. Using the point gauge measure the water level and the bed level at two sections apart. We should wait at least 15 minutes before measuring to reach the steady state. 4. For the same discharge set before, 
Raise the tail water gate to increase the water level inside the flume and measure the water level and bed level at the same sections. 5. Change the valve opening to get another different discharge in the flume and repeat the previous steps. The experiment data sheet will be as we see. For the first discharge, change the tailgate position into low, medium, and high. And at every tailgate position get water level and bed level at different sections, then get Y1 and Y2, and the average Y then. Continue computing the parameters until we get Manning and Chessy coefficient. The whole process will be repeated after changing the discharge. After collecting the data from the experiment, we would be able to calculate all the parameters as explained.
and thus obtain Manning and Chessy coefficient with respect to depth change. For the first discharge, as water depth increases, the Manning coefficient decreases while Chessy coefficient increases. This means that as water depth increases, the cross-section material becomes more smoother, and for the second discharge, the same trend for Manning and Chessy coefficients appear. We also can notice that Manning coefficient has opposite trend to Chessy coefficient. Because Manning coefficient reflects the roughness of the cross-section while Chessy coefficient reflects the smoothness of the cross-section, this is our cross-section. It's composed of stainless steel base and side glasses. So, when water depth increases, the contribution of glass in the wetted perimeter increases while the contribution of stainless steel bed remains the same. We can also say that the cross-section material becomes smoother. We can clarify this from the formula for equivalent Manning coefficient for composite cross-sections. On the other hand, when we deal with non-composite section made of one material, does Chessy or Manning coefficients are constant with bed material? Or it's also affected by changing water depth? Think, search, and discover by yourself. If we put the two curves of water depth versus Manning coefficient for the two discharges in the same chart, we will find that Manning coefficient has nearly the same value at the same depth if the discharge is different. This means that Manning coefficient does not change with discharge. It's affected by the bed material and maybe the variation of water depth in non-composite cross-sections. On the other hand, if we put the two curves of water depth versus Chessy coefficient for the two discharges in the same chart, we will find that Chessy coefficient differs with discharge for the same water depth. So, Chessy coefficient is affected by bed material, varying depth and the velocity of the flow.